it's interesting how many of the institutions we have uh, were designed for cultural things or, or, or designed for systems that are no longer relevant. So I, back when I was in high school, I read John Taylor Gatto's Underground History of American Education, where he talks about some of the things that you do about how schooling was basically designed to create workers for the industrial system. And of course, that system no longer exists. And if you even even if you were just trying to train workers, it's not what you're training them for anymore. Um, so I, but the challenge is that, of course, when you do that, there's cultural ideas that are created. So I'm curious what misconceptions people who were brought up in the school system have that they might need to let go of or dispel if they want something different for their children. Because, you know, anytime you're trying to give people a new idea, you always have to address the misconceptions. So what are the misconceptions that people have going into homeschooling or thinking about this if they've come from the school system and gone through that and maybe picked up whatever cultural programming it instilled in them? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, that's where this past year has been such a boon for homeschooling is that um, it's now sort of a really mainstream option. It had certainly been moving over the past several decades from kind of the margins to the mainstream of education and, and more and more families were choosing it. Um, but nothing like this past year. And so I think just a result of the fact that you now have sort of comparable numbers of students homeschooling as attending K-12 private schools in the U.S., um, you know, shows that it's it's really a legitimate option for families. And I think that that will help to um, eliminate any of sort of the remaining stereotypes that might have lingered um, from the early days of homeschooling before it was even really legally recognized, which didn't happen until the mid 1990s. Um, and so, yeah, I think more families are discovering that this is, you know, a great path for them. And I think that they're realizing that there are just so many resources available to them, that this is not an isolated practice, that this is not something that, um, that again, is the res you know, requires a parent staying home full time or typically a mom, again, being the one to um, teach from a curriculum and, and be, you know, solely responsible for a child's education. They realize there's just so many other resources available to them. And I will say, you know, one um, encouraging statistic uh, has come out of Ed Choice, and they've been tracking since uh, April of 2020 parents' responses in a variety of surveys to uh, school closures and education disruption. Um, since the since the beginning of the pandemic last March. So their first survey came out in April and they found in that survey that more than half of the parents surveyed had a more favorable view of homeschooling than they did prior to the school closures. And I remember thinking at the time, gosh, you know, if parents think that this <laughs> version of pandemic kind of crisis homeschooling is you know, good, or they have a favorable opinion of it, just imagine the real thing. You know, we were all, and homeschoolers included, completely severed from our communities. We weren't able to go to the library or the museums or get together with friends or attend classes in person. So it was a shock for everyone. And yet the fact that more than half of parents thought more favorably of homeschooling, even under those you know, extreme circumstances, I thought was a good indicator that we were going to see, you know, some significant growth in independent homeschooling over the course of the year. And we did. I mentioned the U.S. Census Bureau data. Um, Gallup and Education Week also did uh, other polls of, of families and found similar numbers of parents choosing homeschooling over the, this previous academic year. So just tremendous growth. And then Ed Choice continued to survey parents every month um, from April 2020 uh, up until the present. And back in February of 2021, they discovered that they that 64 percent of parents had a more favorable view of homeschooling than they did prior to the pandemic so it was actually increasing uh, as <laughs> homeschooling went along or as school closures continued and again this is still 
um, a case where in many places, including I'm in Boston, Massachusetts, um, you know, our, our museums have just started to reopen recently, our library is still closed uh, for in-person browsing. So still to see parents have a more uh, favorable view of homeschooling in light of those circumstances, I think is a positive sign that many parents will will stick with it uh, even into the academic e next academic year and so, beyond. So crisis homeschooling is better than school as normal. <laughs> It was shocking to see that. Yeah. And that was really um, that was really my first indicator that something big was going to happen uh, over the course of the um, of this academic year, that there was really going to be some substantial change. Um, another big signal was the first week of July of 2020 was the first week that parents in the state of North Carolina were um, able to submit their intent to homeschool form online. Um, and so many parents <laughs> went on to the website that first week of July that it crashed the state's education website. Uh, and they just experienced significant growth in homeschooling numbers this year and other states did as well. So, uh, you know, just dramatic change. And, and, and then as a result of that, we've seen, you know, really de big declines in public school enrollment um, in most states across the country, down an average of about 2% in public school enrollment this year. Um, based just on school closures or the pandemic response, not on any demographic changes. Uh, some states like Arizona down 5%, Massachusetts down 4% in public school enrollment um, and seeing increases in homeschooling uh, and charter schools and some private schools as well in, in many areas as in particular private schools were able to stay open or reopen um, in ways that district schools were not. Thank you for listening. If you like this clip, please subscribe and share the show with someone else who would also like it. You can find The Brennan Murata Show on all major podcast platforms and at brennanmurata.com slash show. Thanks again for listening, and I hope to share more with you in the future.